All right, so a piston cylinder device initially contains 0.5 cubic meters of nitrogen gas, 400 kPa, 27 degrees C. Electric heater within the device is turned on. It passes a current 2 amps for 5 minutes from 120 volts. Nitrogen expands at constant pressure. We've got a heat loss. We've got just about everything. We want to determine the final temperature of the nitrogen. So think about all of the different energies we've got and all the different works that we've got. All right. So there's no inlet or outlet, so there's no uh, energy due to inlets and outlets. But on the left-hand side of our equation, there is heat, there is work. On the right-hand side, there's the change in energy. All right, should this change in energy be delta U or delta H, it expands at a constant pressure. So this should be delta H, and there's no change in kinetic energy, there's no change in potential energy. This, the right-hand side of our equation, should be delta H, and delta H, I'm going to say, is MCP delta T, all right? Because we're using specific heats. We're using specific heats. Okay, all right, so uh, do we have any Q? Do we have any heat? we got a heat loss. We've got a heat loss of 2,800... Joules. Um, can we say 2.8 kilojoules? You don't mind if we go ahead and say 2.8 kilojoules? We might could have everything in joules, but we'd have to be just very careful making sure the right hand side of our equation was in joules. But I did some, I forgot something really important. Negative, right? That was a heat loss. And the way I do this, work and heat in is positive, work and heat out is negative. So this is negative 2.8 kilojoules. All right, is there any work besides boundary work? Remember, we don't have to worry about boundary work for a constant pressure process because of this delta H. That's kind of in, implied in the delta H on the right-hand side of our equation. So no boundary work, but is there, is there any other work? Yeah, the electric heater device, it passes a current 2 amps for 5 minutes. Um, I know that uh, the work is... Um, a voltage times uh, amp times time. Yeah, there we go. Voltage times amp times time. Uh, but this would be joules. This would be joules. If, if we did volt amp times seconds, that would be joules. All right, so first thing. It's going in. We're putting it into our system, so I've I'm, I'm got plus. The voltage is 120 volts. Current is 2 amps. 5 minutes. Do you all mind if I just go ahead and put 300 seconds? Volt, amp, seconds. That's joules divided by 1,000, and that is kilojoules. Divided by 1,000, and that is kilojoules. All right, that's what we got on the left-hand side of our equation. On the right-hand side of our equation, we've got mass. Did it tell me the mass? No, it didn't tell me the mass. Darn it. All right, we'll come back to that. What is the CP for nitrogen at 27 degrees C, which is 300 Kelvin? So go to property tables. We're in SI units. Go to table A2. Uh, that's at 300 Kelvin, or I could go to uh, this one, nitrogen, but I'm still reading off the same. All right, so should I use it at, it starts at 300 Kelvin. Uh, it goes to, I don't know what it goes to, so I can't use it at T average. So let me just use it at the beginning. This is what I want you to do. The book might tell you differently. I want you to, to use it at T1. And if your T2 is, is wildly different from T1, then redo the problem looking at kind of an average temperature between what you got. Uh, but nitrogen, 300. Uh, let's see. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Do I need CP or CV? This was a constant pressure process. I'm looking for delta H. I need CP. So I'm going to use 1.309 units or kilojoules per kilogram K. So here we go. 1.039 kilojoules per kilogram K. 
uh, times delta t. Times delta t. Uh, you could, I could just put delta t right there, or maybe go ahead and say 2, 2, minus 27 degrees C. Do you see how I'm leaving 27 degrees C? Uh, even though this says Kelvin, because this is a change in temperature, as long as both of those temperatures are in Celsius, it doesn't matter if both of them are in Celsius or both of them are in Kelvin, it's the same change in a temperature. Okay, but here's my problem. I don't have the mass. Here's my problem. I don't have the mass, but it is nitrogen. Um, it's an ideal gas. I know the pressure and I know the temperature. I can find the mass. PV equals MRT, right? P1, V1, right? Uh, of course, this R is not changing. The mass is not entering or exiting. So I can find the mass this way. The pressure was 400 kPa, the volume 0.5 meters cubed. The R for nitrogen, go back to table 1, 0.297 kPa meters cubed per kilogram K. And the temperature, this is where I do definitely need to change that 27 degrees C plus 273 to change it from Celsius to Kelvin. Because that's not a delta T, that's a T. Right? If it's a delta T, I don't have to change it. If it's a just a T, I do have to change it. Here I would get the mass, 2.245 kilograms. Then I can plug it right there. All the units work out to be kilojoules on the right-hand side, kilojoules on the left-hand side. I would get T2, 56.7 degrees C. That's not very far off from 27 degrees. I can look at that, um, the these values, it's not changing very much as we change temperature. And the temperature change, it only changed a little bit. So yeah, that using 1.039 was a good, um, a good specific heat value. Okay, but did you see what we did? We used conservation of energy. Thought about all the cues that were going in and out. Thought about all the work that was going in and out. Said my delta, my energy needed to be enthalpy because it's a constant pressure process. Enthalpy is Cp delta T and then solve for T2, getting the mass from PV equals MRT. Pretty cool.